Hello, and welcome to another edition of Wave Lab Workflows. My name is Justin Perkins. Today we're going to be talking about the loudness meta normalizer and some other loudness normalization related things in the audio editor and even the batch processor, which might come in handy for people that have a large quantity of files that they want to set to the same average loudness, same peak loudness. I'll show you all those types of things, but my main focus was going to be in the audio montage, how to use the loudness normalizer, the meta normalizer, to kind of get songs to the same loudness as a starting point. Now, I know a lot of people are familiar with loudness normalization as a end point, such as the streaming services. Um, a majority of the streaming service has, services have loudness normalization on by default, which means if you install the Spotify app on your phone or computer, loudness normalization is on by default, and it's essentially setting all the songs to the same loudness or adjusting the loudest song on an album to a certain loudness and the other songs by that same amount so the relationship stays the same. That's getting a little off topic, but I think there's some people that don't consider loudness normalization as a starting point. And whether I'm working in the box all digitally, or even if I'm using analog gear in my mastering chain, I will use loudness normalization to start my sessions so that the levels are feeding my processing chain, whether it's digital, analog, or a hybrid, it's feeding it um, an expected amount. And I can always fine tune it from there as I'm working, but it gives me a very good starting point for working. So I'm not wrestling the loudness of um, the incoming material. So I find that not having to wrestle the loudness of the incoming material really helps me out quite a bit. And I'm just going to make sure we're on because I'm not seeing any levels. But we appear to be on. Okay. Anyways, I find that having using loudness normalization as a starting point really helps me, again, not have to wrestle these... Um, wide range of files we might get from a client to start mastering from because we can get levels that are all over the place especially if the album or ep was mixed by different people um and again i fine tune by ear but i find that the loudness normalization in wave lab gets me 95 percent there as a starting point and to be honest with you i have enough plug-in um kind of starting points where i could without even listening, get something to be within, you know, minus 10 to minus 7 LUFS. You know, pretty close to where it's going to be without even listening to it. Now, I'm not saying I do that, but it helps with repeatability. And again, I just find that, you know, it's so much easier when you have a fixed starting point, especially for my analog chain. I rarely touch the input and output, output controls of my compression and DSing and stuff because I'm feeding it a fixed level that I've deemed to be appropriate for my processing chain and it works for analog and digital. So before I get to the montage, I just wanted to point out the uh, what you can do in the audio editor. And for those that don't know, WaveLab has two main environments. It has the audio editor and it has the audio montage. The editor is more or less a destructive environment. So I don't really use it for much processing. I use the audio editor to analyze files that I've either received or have processed and I check it before I send out for any issues or glitches or just a, as a double check. So the audio editor is what I'm looking at now. You can tell because it says audio editor. And for those who have watched my other live streams, you may notice I'm using the default layout today because um, I think it's just going to be easier to show some things. So I'm using the default layout instead of my usual layout. And the reason for that is some of the montage meta normalizer options will change things in the, the montage output faders and stuff like that. So I thought it would be good to have them visible today. But as far as the audio, audio editor, there's it's, it's somewhat limited, but if you go to the process tab, you can press loudness and you get this loudness normalizer. And again, this is just gonna be one file at a time. But as you can see, you have a variety of options you can 
catch, you can uh, analyze, this is basically to analyze the audio selection. And if you don't select anything, it'll analyze the whole file. But if I wanted to achieve a loudness of minus 23 LUFS of whatever this file is, I can choose that. Of course, I can type in my own number, minus 16. And there's, in this menu, there's three options. And this is going to come up later, but loudness of the entire file, that's what's known as integrated LUFS, where it takes the reading of an entire file or an entire playback section. And in my opinion, integrated LUFS is not a great way to measure certain things, because if you have a song that starts quiet and ends louder, which is why I picked some of these files, um, the loudest part of a dynamic song is going to end up louder than the loudest part of a song that is fairly steady loudest the whole time. So in my opinion, integrated loudness is good for things like television programs or movies, you know, things like that entire program. But for music, I don't really care for integrated loudness because it, um, songs can have a wide dynamic range and it does have a gate to ignore very low levels, but Anyways, um, entire file is basically integrated LUFS. Top of loudness range is kind of my favorite one to use, and it's really unique to WaveLab. I've never seen this in a different program, and I didn't want to get the wording wrong, so I just have the manual open. Um, top of loudness range um, uses the average loudest three-second audio section, which is slightly different than maximum short-term loudness, which is the absolute loudest three-second um, audio range or selection. So it's very similar to sh maximum short-term LUFS. In my opinion, it's just a little more musical. And that's what I always use to start my sessions is the top of loudness range. And I'll explain why in a moment. And then the other section is, again, maximum short-term loudness, which is, is very similar. You're going to want to pay attention to digital or true peaks. I don't want to talk too much about the difference, but true peaks are the approximation of the recreation of an analog waveform. So true peaks are going to read a fraction of a decibel higher than digital peaks. Um, you can use Google to learn more about that. It mostly comes in handy when you are trying to do peak normalization and you're close to the digital ceiling is where that's going to matter the most. And there's some tolerance settings um, and things like that, um, that you can play around with. So the, the audio editor has... Um, the loudness normalizer. Notice the lack of word meta, but if I apply this, it's gonna it's analyzing it, and it's gonna do a couple passes to make sure that it's got the the math correctly when it changes it. And I've set it to do a maximum of five passes if it needs it. So, as you can see, the level I chose. Um, ended up resulting in some peaks going over zero. My whole point was, whatever you decide to do, you can either save this file and overwrite it, you know, you're just overwriting the original file, which in my opinion is kind of dangerous because if you're working on your client's files, you, you know, you usually want to have a way to get back to how it originally started. Um, the other option would be to render a new file of this. Um, whatever you decide to do, render a new file using the render settings and then you always have the, you know, then you would um, close this without saving. So you have the original. Um, also, I'm going to undo this. Also in this audio editor is just normal um, peak normalization. So if I wanted the highest peak to be minus one, a couple other settings, you know, we got true peaks and digital peaks, but you know, not much change there because the peak was already pretty close, but I really don't use this at all. I'm just showing you that it's available in the audio editor um, and pan normalizer. I actually forgot about this until right now, but pan normalizer is kind of cool because if you have a file that is off balance, maybe the left channel is heavier than the right or vice versa, and it's not supposed to be, um, you can kind of even things out that way. Again, that's not something I do very often, but it can't, comes in handy with older recordings sometimes from tape where the tape machine wasn't aligned correctly. So that's normalization in the audio editor. Again, not something I really ever do personally. 
And at the end of this video, I'm going to show the batch processor, which would be if you have dozens of files or hundreds of files that you want set to the same loudness, there's a batch processor that makes very quick work of that. But my main uh, intention for this video is to show you the audio montage, because that's where the meta normalizer is. So I'm going to load in um, eight files here. We, we could pretend this is the album I'm going to master in the box, or I'll also show you if I was going analog, but I'm going to load in these eight files. Those of you that know WaveLab know that you can quickly pick the order of the songs. I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to get into album mastering, so I'm just making stuff up here, but let's say that's the song order. And I'm going to load these files into this montage. I'll just call it Meta Normalizer demo. Again, I'm not going to get any mastering stuff or markers. This is strictly meta normalizer video. But as, as you can see, uh, there's eight files here. And they're fairly consistent in level, but that's not always the case in ma when we get files into master. So uh, in the basic sense, what I might do is go to the process tab again and choose meta normalizer. And it brings up this window. And as you can see, I have some presets for in the box, which is ITB, or out of the box, which is OTB. They're very similar, just slightly different level to feed my analog chain versus my plug-in chain. And my in the box setting is somewhat conservative because sometimes I'll be using plugins that simulate an analog tape machine or something like that. And, you know, typically those are set calibrated a certain way so i can't necessarily go to minus 12 right now or minus 9 lufs so i tend to go i found and again there, there's no magic to this number i just built my workflow around using minus 16 lufs as a starting point but again not integrated i'm using top of loudness range and as you'll notice i have all these other two options turned off because you I'll, I'll show you this but you can have the level be changed at the montage output stage or the master section. And those of you that see my videos, I never use the master section for anything. It's rare that I even have it visible. And the montage output, I normally keep locked, you know, because you can accidentally move these faders. I'm accidentally moving it now by scrolling my mouse wheel. I find that to be a little dangerous. So I keep these um, locked at zero normally, but I have it unlocked today to show you some of the other features. But my point is you can change the loudness of the individual clips. And if you choose these other two, it's taking an average of your whole montage. So again, I don't find that very useful for album mastering. So that's why my preset has these unchecked. So let's get into the clips section. Again, I've chosen, well, I'll go through the options. Do not change loudness would be pointless. Uh, match loudest clip could be useful. That means you're going to match... Um, all the other songs or clips to the loudest one, if you want that to be your starting point. Uh, match loudness of active clips. So you could you could pick a favorite clip and so have it selected before you open this window, like this. And you could choose match loudness of active clip. Um, I choose match specific loudness when I'm doing this. And there's also the option of equalize peak levels, which... To me, peak levels, normalizing peak levels is sort of pointless at this stage because you can have a song of a certain loudness and has one stray peak. Um, and so for, for, for every, every time I start a mastering project, I use this um, setting that you're looking at right here. And some of the other settings would be ignore peaks. I don't care about the peaks because for one, 99% of the time, normalizing these unmastered mixes to minus 16 LUFS using top of loudness range is not going to get anywhere near the digital ceiling. So I'm just ignoring peaks. I can't even think of a time where there has been that situation. It had to be a very strange file for it to have a loudness of minus 16 LUFS. Again, top of loudness range is very similar to short-term maximum short-term loudness. And again, I'm not using loudness of entire clip. I'll show you why, but I just think this is a bad setting for a starting point. And I purposely picked these very dynamic songs that somebody sent me to show you why I think it's a bad idea um, to use integrated normalization as a starting point for mastering. Because 
what you're going to find is the, the loudest parts of a dynamic song end up to be too loud. So I want the, the whole goal is to get the loudest parts of each song to hit the same loudness so that even if you didn't do any further work, you could listen to that as a record and not want to adjust your volume. Now, it wouldn't be anywhere near the final master product probably, but it's, again, a great starting point. So I'm ignoring peaks. If you do choose to have it consider peaks, you can set the peak ceiling that you don't want it to exceed. But again, I'll get back to my preset. And some other things I have is change pre-gain. And what that means is, for those, hopefully most of you know this, but WaveLab has clip effects. So when I'm mastering an album, I'm going to be putting songs right on each clip. Or sorry, I'm going to be putting plugins right on each clip, which is basically each song. Now there is, of course, track plugins and output plugins, which is kind of like your master fader. And there's a whole master section that I don't use. But the reason, um, the reason I'm choosing pre-gain is because WaveLab lets you change the gain of a clip either pre or post. And when it says pre or post, that means pre-clip effects or post-clip effects. So um, for example, and I'm sorry if I'm a little lost, this is not my usual layout, but let's say I have this EQ on this first clip. You can see the level going in is minus six. If I were to drop the pre-gain by minus by 10 decibels, you can see the level is now much lower. But if I change it post, it shouldn't change at all. Maybe I have that backwards. No. I do have that backwards. But basically, I want to change the gain before any, um, I want to change the, I want, I want to change the gain before any plugin processing because I don't want that to, or I do want that to affect, you know, things like dynamics processing, like compression and limiting. So I always adjust the gain pre clip effects. So that's why I have the setting chosen. And if for some reason you wanted to, you could choose only selected clips. So if I only wanted to be changing some of the clips in the montage instead of all of them, I could choose this option. So watch what happens when I press this. Uh, we can see right now all the clips are set to their natural level. And I just pressed apply. So now it's analyzing each clip and now it's going to adjust. Now it adjusted each clip by a certain amount, some more than others. But the whole point is the... Yeah, let me try this again. My point is the whole... Um, The whole point here is that I have the loudest part of each song hitting the same um, loudness. So let's see what happens when I play this. Loudness meter. It's about minus, so you can see it's about minus 16. That looks like about the loudest part. And the whole point is there could be slightly louder parts because I'm using the loudness range option. So to me, this is a very good starting point for mastering from and I can put my usual plug-in chain but let's let's see what happens so with that setting it, it raised the first song which is a very dynamic song as you can see it starts very quiet gets louder it only changed that song by not even a full decibel it boosted it by you know 0.921 decibels let me undo the change and use uh, loudness of entire clip, which is basically integrated loudness. I'm going to press apply. Watch how much more it's going to change. Um, didn't change it by that much. Um, but some of them changed by, you know, different amounts because I don't want the whole song to measure a certain amount, I want the loudest parts of each song to kind of hit the same level. So 
that is kind of my philosophy behind this as a starting point. And if I were going analog, let me open up that template. I could load these eight songs on my um, track that goes out to my analog gear. And for those that don't know, well, let me let me do it all on one. For those that don't know, it initially looks like you can't do it because if you, uh, let's try this one more time. If you try to run it on a reference track, if I try to run the meta normalizer, it's going to say there's no clips to process. I have to select the little listen button. And now it's going to normalize these. And again, this is something that I've just decided is the right level to feed my analog chain. And I can unlisten. So now, you know, of course I can fine tune it by ear as I'm working, but that gets mixes that are all over the place kind of to the same loudness. And I'm going to make a new session here because I, I feel like I might have... There might have been a, a weird bug or something strange happening that I wasn't expecting. So let's try this again. I'm going to try loudness of entire clip. And let's just see. This is the unfun part of live, uh, live streaming. So you can see when I choose... Entire clip, it's, it, it, it uses different numbers or it sets them to different values than if I were to choose um, top of loudness range. So for me, that's the preferred way to get, that's the most musical way anyway, in my opinion, to get all the songs. And your, your, your ear might tell you otherwise, but for me, and again, I think something that was slightly weird the last time I was doing this, it could have been a bug or a glitch or my brain having a glitch, but this would be kind of my starting point for, you know, doing in the box work where I would start adding clip effects, you know, a plug in chain on each song, and then perhaps a final limiter on the output stage. Um, so I'm not seeing any questions on that, but for me, I, again, for every project I do, whether it's analog or digital, I always normalized to a certain value and these aren't changing much but i'll get mixes that are super quiet sometimes um you know mixes that are all over the place and again it's not applying any limiting or compression to do this it's just straight gain changes and the other nice thing is that it's non-destructive so if i decide that you know this song still feels a little too loud because of it's just the piano and vocal or something I can just go to it and and change the level to minus one to, to drop it down. So all these changes are um, non-destructive. It's 64-bit float processing. It's a really clean gain change, and you're not committed to that because I've seen some people maybe do this kind of work with a batch processor, and they're creating new files then, and then they're kind of stuck at that length range and they're changing it more so in my opinion i like that this stays flexible and if if i'm working and i'm deciding that if i if i start getting pretty far in the process and i decide that this song isn't hitting my you know compression and limiting chain hard enough i can bump it up to you know a db or two until it feels right and also a lot of times what i'll do in mastering is level automation so if, if i feel like the song's too dynamic i can boost up the front or the back and of course the envelopes can be um the envelopes can be pre or post they change where it is now and i'm in a different layout but the envelopes can be pre or post um clip effects as well so i have it set to be pre so if you zoom in you'll see the envelope is before the effects if you press that the envelope is after the clip effects but of course it's all before the track and montage output effects so let me just quickly show you the other options because again I, I don't use them but the audio montage output you can match a specific loudness so if for some reason i wanted this whole album to be minus 14 let's pick that number because everyone thinks about that number um 
there's again the three options of loudness of the whole montage, which is you know almost 40 minutes of material. Top of loudness range, that's what I would pick for the most musical s solution. But um, and then you have to pick a maximum peak level for this. But watch what happens when I choose this. It's going to take a moment, so I'm going to grab a sip of water. But basically, it's going to change the um, the output fader by a certain amount to reach that. And for whatever reason, I just don't use the output faders. I, I keep them locked in at zero because I think it can just get dangerous to start changing those. And I'm glad they put a lock button on them. But um, again, I'm trying to think of a scenario when you would, would want to use this. Maybe sound design or something outside of just mastering EPs and albums. But you can see to, to achieve the loudness that I told it, it boosted up. The montage output fader by a decibel, um, just over a decibel. So, um, not something I really use, like I mentioned. And then you can do the same exact thing, but using in the master section, which for those that aren't familiar with WaveLab as much, the master section is after the montage, it's kind of its own separate entity that you have to save and load. Um, as you can see, I keep it locked. Um, but it will change those if you use that that setting instead. And you can use some combination of them, but to be honest with you, I've never used these two sections until I had to explore them to do this video. So I, I just don't think there's a whole lot of value in those, but they're there for those who want it. Um, again, this is kind of my go-to setting to start an album. And you can choose any number that works for you. If you think your plug-in chain feels better at a different level then set it to that and save your own preset but for me that's a really powerful way to start working it just takes i don't have to waste the mental energy of um getting all the songs on the same page it does it for me pretty scientifically in a matter of seconds to a point where i just occasionally have to fine tune it um so the other um thing i wanted to show was the batch processor um, and you can also copy and paste these values um, I do some I wouldn't call it stem mastering I call it library music library production music mastering where I have um, many versions of the same song just different mixes things like that and I actually stack them I put them on their own track and stack them up and just have all the other ones muted but if I wanted to copy this number, you can copy and paste that number to all the other ones. I mean, I wouldn't do that for this case, but if you had if you had something, or even if you had them strung out on the timeline, if you had your main mix and your vocal mix without vocals and your clean version, um, you know, I do this a lot with, with single song mastering, to be honest with you. Uh, let me see if I can open up a single that I can show you. But basically, I should have thought of this. That's just the main version. Let's see what this is. Here's one where I have it main and instrumental. It's going to be a little different because I've already processed it with analog gear, but, you know, let's say you run the normalizer. Um, it's, going to pro it's going to set your main version and your instrumental to be slightly different levels, and you may not want that because you want, you know, the same exact processing. So you can copy the value of the main version and, and paste that to your alternate mixes if you want them to have the exact same gain staging and things like that. So I just want to be, you to be aware that you can highlight and copy and paste these um, numbers. So basically the last section I want to show is the batch processor because it has kind of a lot going on really, including a way to generate a report of loudness of files. So... Um, I'm going to close this, I'm going to close this, 
Um, and again, I don't use the batch processor a whole lot in my workflow, but if you had a lot of, let's say you do sound effects or sound design or something where you just have a lot of files and you need to get them all to be the same level, obviously, you know, th this would be a bit of a shortcut in doing that. But if they're lower level sound effects where you're not hitting the digital ceiling and having to do limiting where creative decisions you, know, you could use the batch processor to get them all to be minus 23 or minus 18 or some kind of safe but decent level um, the first thing to do is to get files into the batch processor so i'll put these same eight files in there because have them set aside for this um, so I, now i've loaded these eight files in the batch processor over here is our plugins and there's a couple plugins or, of note here. There's the Metal Leveler, which I'm not really going to get into. It's pretty simple. It just has a gain and a maximum peak. And you can set all the files to that based on true, digital peaks or true peaks. But what I did want to show you is the Loudness Meta Normalizer. It's going to be similar to what you've seen, but a little more basic. But again, you get these three options of you could match the other files to the loudest one in your group. You could match the maximum achievable loudness, which would be, you know, setting the peak to the digital ceiling, um, which is not always something you'd want to do. But probably what most people want to do is match the specific loudness. So I'll just choose minus 23. I'll go with minus 18. Um, and again, you'll see these similar or familiar options of the loudness of the entire file. So again, if it's a file that has a wide dynamic range, you're going to end up with the loudest part of that file perhaps being louder than... Um, the loudest part of other files that have a more steady loudness throughout. So I don't really care for integrated or loudness of entire entire file. Again, unless unless you're delivering files to someone that has a specific requirement, you know, like if you're delivering the final mix of a video content, they're going to say, you know, we want all these to be, especially like a video series, if they're saying we want all these videos to be minus 23 integrated well then you would probably want to use the top first option but if you're doing more musical stuff with less rules top of loudness range or maximum short-term loudness is gonna be more musical or more natural because again the loudest part of each piece or file is going to hit the same loudness so you could you could listen to it and kind of the crescendo or the the climax of each piece is going to hit the same loudness and for the most part that's I think what you would want to hear if you're listening to an album or doing anything really. Um, and this only matters if you're getting loud enough to hit the digital ceiling. So there's the loudness meta normalizer um, in the meta pass section. In the multi pass section, we also have the pan normalizer, like I showed you earlier, uh, and some of the other ones that we saw in the audio editor so they're back here in the batch processor if you prefer to use those to process a bunch of files at one time and the nice thing about the batch processor is it's less easy to accidentally overwrite the original files because for the most part i think you want to keep your original files in case you need to go back and revisit them um, so i'm going to show you how to use the batch processor using um, the actual meta normalizer I can get back to it. There it is. Let me delete these other instances. Remove. So we'll go back to this. And then I'll show you the audio report because that's actually pretty cool. So we'll use these settings. Um, I did a whole batch processor um, live stream with Ian Stewart a while back. If you really want to get into the weeds of how the batch processor works, you can watch that. But basically... Um, you can have the files go anywhere, but by default, it's in the, and it'll create an output folder. 
and in the sub in a, as a subfolder in where the files came from. Um, I can rename the files if you need to. Uh, we can have a naming scheme. So if you wanted to add a version two to the end of the file name, you could format. You can pick all these things. I'm not going to get into the weeds of that, but basically press start, and it's processing each file as you can see. The little gear means that that's the one that's processing. The yellow dot means that it has been processed. And while it's doing that, let's jump over to the folder where this is happening and we'll see this output folder. Um, or did I change it? We'll have to look in the source path. Maybe it doesn't maybe it doesn't appear until it's all done. Yep, it waits till they're all done, I guess. A little different than working in the montage. Anyway, here's those eight files that have been meta normalized as far as their loudness goes. And it I just added the V2 just to show you that it's possible. But if we were to open these in um the audio editor and measure one of them. Let's see what we get. It should be whatever I told it to be. Well, it's going to be slightly different because I said use top of loudness range, but if I would have chose integrated, it would match exactly. But again, this is, I think, the more musical method, more musical method. Um, I'm going to show you one other thing here before we get close to wrapping it up. And that is the audio analysis report. So we could, if you want to process the same files, you have to uh, re reset the status from, you can see it's green means it's processed. But I guess let's remove these. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could load in the files that you just um, changed, you know, the new files that have been loudness normalized. And I'm going to get rid of this one. Um, I actually didn't discover this until recently, but there is a audio analyzer. And it has a few options. I like to have it make a PDF file. You can have it spit out HTML in a web browser a spreadsheet, all sorts of things. And there's a number of things that it can include or not include. It's up to you um, what you would like. But let's just say I do that. And then I press start. Now it's, again, analyzing all these files. And it's going to give me a PDF with a nice readout of the measurements of each file, which I've, I don't normally do, but I've seen people working in post-production have been asked to, aside from providing the files, provide some kind of audio summary of, of all the files in terms of loudness and duration and all sorts of stuff. So the audio analyzer is a cool thing that's in the batch processor if you need to just provide a report of, of all the files um, or if you just want to know and, and, and see a bunch of files in, in one spot you know see this the 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 statistics so that's what it looks like it's a pdf file when it's done and some useful information perhaps um, perhaps not but that's that if anybody has any questions i know this will be a slightly shorter one but these are honestly about the length that they're intended to be in the first place i just tend to go long on some of the more involved topics, but this is a, a fairly simple topic, pretty straightforward. Um, I've just been meaning to focus on it because when I'm doing a demonstration of, you know, mastering in general, the loudness normalizer tends to get sort of overlooked pretty quickly because um, I just pop it open and use my preset and go. But again, think of the loudness, the meta normalizer as a starting point for your unmastered files you know if you're starting a, an album 
you know um these are actually pretty reasonable mix levels but again i get stuff that's super quiet all over the place you know if you run this it takes just a couple seconds and then with the right you know i have a i have a plug-in chain for my clips that has you know some eq some things and the makeup gain i have it set in such a way that the threshold of the compressor that i like is just barely starting to do some gain reduction and the output gain of that compressor the output gain of that compressor is at a level that's um feeding the Sorry, limiter sure siri thinks i'm talking to her um the output level of that compressor is feeding um, my limiter and my montage output to the point where that's just starting to do some gain reduction. So again, it gets me right in that ballpark of like things are just starting to get compressed and limited. Um, and then I can decide from there how loud to go and do I need to shape the EQ to be able to get louder without too much compression and limiting happening. Uh, if there's too much low end triggering compression and limiting, I can decide to address that or not or what to do. But it gets me extremely close in terms of level and i feel like you know i'm not spending and wasting energy you know wrangling in levels that are all over the place um, you know if you do sound design and you got all these sound effects that you've created you may want to load them into a montage and run the meta normalizer on them and then still listen and fine tune but then once you're happy with that you could um once you've run the meta normalizer and done any manual tweaks, you could render new files of those, you know, whatever they are, sound effects, short little interludes. You can render new files that have all the adjustments made so that when you pass them on to a video editor or licensing company, et cetera, that everything's more cohesive in terms of level. And you can just be confident that everything is, um, going to be presented well and not, you know, jumping up and down in level. So if there's no further questions, I'm going to press end on this live stream. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, we have the WaveLab users group on Facebook. We have the WaveLab forum on the Steinberg website. That's a great place to ask questions, things like that. I have a website called wavelabhelp.com where you can download a lot of my settings. Siri is really going to take Siri off my watch. Um, here's a question. Where did you open the batch processor with the analyzer? Um, there's a few different layouts you can have, but again, I have more or less the default layout open today. And if you press this little new button, it's a square with a plus, um, you can open a new audio file, a new audio montage, or a new batch processor. There's a few presets. Um, I just choose one core empty because I usually am not doing anything too extreme. when I, I, I'm just not a big batch processor user. But um, once that's open, you can press the plus button to look at your available plugins. And the audio analyzer is available in the monopass plugins section. You know, there's... If I close this, well, there's MetaPass, MonoPass. There's a few different sections, and they're not cooperating with me, but maybe I have to have files open. But basically, that's where the um, audio analyzer is. And again, there's different options to show or not show the sample rate and different loudness readings, but hopefully that answers the question of where the audio analyzer is and with that i lost my screen to see if there's any questions so i'm going to bring that around but i think i was just saying wavelabhelp.com has a way to download all my kind of settings and presets and starting points and to watch the other live streams they're also available of course on youtube for free I've had to turn off the booking live sessions because I just have not had time to do anything like that lately, but wavelabhelp.com has all the, the resources. Um, and again, check out the wavelab users group on Facebook. It's a good place to 
ask questions and interact with others. Um, and the wave lab forum. Um, unfortunately I lost my screen that has the chat with all the questions. I'm going to try to get that back, but if there's no other questions, then we'll, we'll just end it. We'll see if I can make the screen appear without getting too weird. Um, well, I'm sorry if there's other questions being asked. I just, something froze up and I can't see that screen anymore. Let's see if I can get it back. Can't get it back. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next month.